now by phone by former chair, the former chair of the New York Stock Exchange, Dick Grasso. Dick, I've got to say thanks a lot. I know a lot of people are trying to grab you today, so it's an honor that you chose us. And, uh, you know, earlier today, earlier in the show already, we've had uh, uh, one of our cyber experts say, think about the word association, airplanes, New York Stock Exchange, Wall Street Journal. Obviously, you have to flash back to the days of 9-11 and, of course, the days after 9-11. You were there. You opened up the exchange against all odds. You became a national hero. But today, there was absolutely nothing to celebrate. How do you make, how do you make of what happened today? Well, first, Charles, it's always a pleasure to be with you, my friend. Same here. I, I, think, we have to, uh, I think we have to separate what happened at the stock exchange from the Wall Street Journal and United Airlines, at least until there's conclusive evidence that they are, in fact, uh, linked. Uh, you know, the NYSE, I'm told, had a software change installed last night. And oftentimes when that happens, you know, there are unintended consequences of a new software addition to a very complex technology infrastructure. So, uh, so I think evidence by the early morning issue uh, it may well be that the NYSE stands alone. Charles, are you there? I'm here, buddy. And okay. here's what I want to ask it, it, you, though, Dick, on that point. Um, listen, we know they've got circuit breakers. When, when things aren't going well, they can slow down the market. But what happened here? Okay, I get you changed software around. We kind of get that a little bit. But it was really very odd here, Dick, because, I, I, listen, I don't know if this would have happened when you were running it, but the whole thing felt like a fiasco from the, from the events that took place and the way it was handled afterward, Dick. Well, I, I would say this, Charles. I, you know, and you heard Tom Farley, who was a terrific young leader of the exchange. It was not his, his best day. You know, if they had been more communicative early on and simply said, you know, it may well be that there are other technical issues at United Airlines and at Dow Jones or at the Wall Street Journal, but we think, we think, we're not sure, we think we may have caused this internally because of an overnight software change. I think people would have been a lot more comforted that this was not a, a full-scale assault on, on America from a cyber standpoint. Now, you know, you learn from every instance. I think what the, the NYSE has learned is that it's got to be more communicative, particularly with the media, because... You've got the media right there. Nicole Petalini did a fabulous job today from the floor of the exchange. I think had they kept her a bit more in the loop, you know, investors would have been more comforted. Yeah, I Remember, agree. Charles, as I know you know, stock exchange listed securities now trade in 50 different venues. Sure. So it wasn't as if there were no markets available. The question is, how reliable were those alternative markets? And we really don't know the answer to that question because New York is the primary price setter. It is, Dick, but so I, I, I want to ask you, though, on that note, and, 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 and I think maybe even on a personal level for you, when I watch the screens, and, you know, of course, Nicole, to your point, did a great job. I think she could have been helped a lot more by the team down there, but when you watch and I watch, what I saw was a very lonely sight in that hour, almost two hours that they were shut down. Very few people around. Uh, it just felt empty. It felt like the only thing that was missing was perhaps tumbleweed. And a lot of people say, listen, this underscores the fact that the floor has become obsolete. You just talked about all the other avenues of trading. Is it just the fact that maybe the floor isn't needed anymore, the New York Stock Exchange floor? No, I, I, would, I would not agree with that, Charles, from the standpoint that the opening trade each day and the closing trade and the closing trade being far more important to create centralization because all of your mutual funds, all of your major institutional accounts are valued off that closing trade. And what you really need to validate the, the legitimacy of that closing trade is centrality of price discovery. Where, where I'm a little concerned about what happened today, Charles, from an investor standpoint, is that there were 700,000 orders in the system of the NYSE that had to be canceled. The question becomes, how many of those orders sure. got rerouted to other markets? 
and what those investors serve by those other markets. Right. Do they pay more or get less for what their sales were? I want to ask, I want to tell you though, Dick, uh, and you talked about it already, our own very own Nicole Petalidi, she was on the floor of the, of the, at, at the very moment that it happened. And I want the audience to take a listen to understand because this was a shocking moment. Take a listen. Surely. Straight to the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, Nicole. Charles, a moment ago, all the stocks here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange were halted. We're talking about over 3,000 names that trade here on the floor of the exchange. These names can trade away, so they can continue trading. In the meantime, though, you can see the posts behind me. You can see the traders mulling about as they keep going to the ramp to try and get the latest. Dick, uh, we're, I'm getting the rap signal here, but I just want your final thoughts on that. That was a very scary moment for me. And again, it just harks back to the things that are not too far in the recesses of my mind, and I'm sure not too far in the back of yours. Uh, you, you're really comfortable and confident that per, this is, there's no connection here because I just don't think it's a coincidence. These three giant pillars of American capitalism all going down one after the other. Well, Charles, look, at this point, it would be premature to say that it is. And, and on my part, uh, I'm speculating, having run that infrastructure for so many years, that if they had an overnight software change, there's a high probability that that software change was the culprit in the NYSE's glitch today, not something externally. We'll know in the days and, and weeks ahead, and New York has got to be transparent. Absolutely. Tell the investing public exactly what happened here. You know, Dick, I would love if somehow maybe tomorrow, the next day, you could actually go down there and help them ring the opening bell. You were absolutely amazing in the days after 9-11. We love you for it. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. We'll ha hopefully You're have you back You're very sweet to soon. say that, Charles. All and right. I love the great job Fox has done today. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.